Hey guys, what's up? Brian here. Thanks for tuning in today. I want to start this video off by thanking everyone. Last time, I asked you all to comment where you were from and you guys came through. The last video had more comments than every other video that I've made so far, so thank you for that. I love that being this small of a channel, when you comment on one of my videos, you're more than likely going to get a response. I follow a couple of bigger YouTube creators, and when you comment on theirs, you know that the odds are they might not even get to read it, let alone reply to it. Now I do want to see if we can beat the last video though with this one. So if you're watching and if you've made it this far, do me a favor. Comment down below how long you've had your warrior and if it's your first one or if you've owned multiple. Now I've owned this one I have now for a little over a year, but I owned another one previously. I actually call this one my forever warrior because I have no plans on ever getting rid of it. My father now owns my old one and you may have seen them in a few of my videos. I'll also be putting up a poll later because I'm interested in seeing what your warrior everyone is running. Now this week, we're going to be changing out the spark plugs and replacing them with some NGK Iridium plugs. Now the part number for these plugs are going to be DPR7EIX-9. Now the Warrior has four plugs of course, and I'll be leaving a link down below for you to purchase them if you'd like. Now if you're running high compression pistons, you may want to run a little bit cooler of a plug, and that part number is going to be DPR8EIX-9. Now I'm going to be showing you a couple of tips and tricks to get these plugs in and out and hopefully save you from any kind of damage or cross threading of them. A lot of people are going to tell you that you're not going to see much of a performance gain when changing them out without the high compression pistons, but these are a high durability stable spark plug and should last longer than your normal plug, which will hopefully keep you from having to change them as often. Now they do come pre-gap, so you shouldn't have to worry about that, and I'd honestly recommend against trying to get them yourself anyways. They have a very thin electrode, and if you try it, you run the risk of snapping it. If you happen to have a factory toolkit, it will make the job of getting the plugs out a lot easier, and you may also want to have an air compressor and 3 8 inch fuel line handy as well to help with the job. Other than that, guys, let's get out there and change these plugs. Now the very first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and remove your fuel tank to go ahead and give us a little bit more access to everything. Now your setup may be just a little bit different depending on what you're running. I've got the Church TV back installed, so I don't have the stock air box. So if you open up yours and you're still stock, you're going to have a whole big box here that's going to go ahead and cover up a lot of this stuff. This video is going to be more towards, you know, the V-backs and the big air kits and things like that, you know, that kind of have a little bit more access to everything. Now I'm big on trying to do multiple things at once. So as like, if you've seen my gear oil video, you know I had the exhaust off already while doing that. So while I had the exhaust off, it was a perfect time to get in there and change that gear oil. Now on this one, since we're gonna go ahead and get in here, I'd like to get just a little bit more access. So we're gonna go ahead and take off our cone filters from our big air kit and go ahead and clean those at the same time. So let's go ahead and remove those very first. While it's not necessary, I like to go ahead and take a towel or something and kind of shove it in that hole just to keep anything from getting inside there. Next, we'll come up to the front and go ahead and do the same thing here. We'll go ahead and remove this first to go ahead and give us a little bit more room to get that filter out though. Like I said, I'll go ahead and just take a towel, and just shove it in that, just to kind of keep anything from getting in there. All right, now we're gonna start on the left front cylinder, and we're gonna kind of work our way back around. Because honestly, this one's gonna be one of the easiest ones to change. And that last one is gonna be the hardest one to change. So we'll start on this side. Now the very first thing you're gonna wanna do, and while this isn't a necessary step, it's actually pretty smart. Go ahead and take an air compressor and just blow out blow out and kind of get any kind of loose pebbles or anything like that out of there. That way, when you take out the plug, nothing falls into that cylinder. So we'll start doing that. Go ahead and remove the boot. Go ahead and give it another spray. And just like I said, you want to make sure that nothing is going to fall into that cylinder. Now, if you have the factory toolkit, you're lucky enough to have the spark plug remover, so you go ahead and pop that in there. 
we'll go ahead and get this first one out. Now when you go to tighten these back up guys, I believe the specs on them are only 13 foot pounds. So you don't have to tighten them down very much. I believe it's only a quarter turn past hand tight. So go ahead and pull this one out. Now you can see the new plug on the left actually has a different tip than the plug on the right. All you're gonna have to do is unscrew that. Now another good tip for actually putting the plugs back in is go ahead and take it, stick it inside of that 3 8 inch fuel line that I was telling you about earlier, and go ahead and use that to actually stick it in. Now that's gonna help you from hopefully cross-threading it, because it kind of actually gives you just a little bit of a feel to it almost. So go ahead and get that started, and it's not going to let it thread in if it's cross-threaded. So you go ahead and just do that, get that started. You can go ahead pull that hose off. And like I said, you're just gonna hand tighten it first and then just give it about a quarter turn past hand tight. Go ahead and pop that out. Stick your plug back on. Make sure it seats all the way down. You'll hear it snap in. And then you should be good to go to the next one. From there, we're gonna go ahead and move to the left side rear cylinder and go ahead and get that one done. Now this one's actually pretty open, so this one's not gonna give us a whole lot of problems either. Go ahead and take that air chuck, go ahead and blow it out. Pull that boot, blow it out again. Go ahead and remove your plug. Now on this one, I've already removed the tip from the plug. So go ahead and put it in that fuel line. Go ahead and get it started. And tight and give it that quarter turn. Go ahead and pull it. Pop the plug back on. And you're good to move to the next one. Now from there we're gonna go ahead and move to the right rear cylinder. Now some of these wires are actually gonna be in your way. I had to go ahead and remove my uh, zip ties that were holding these wires in place. So you go ahead and remove those to give you a little bit more room. And we're gonna do the same thing, just like we did with the other ones. We're gonna go ahead and grab that nozzle and go ahead and spray out that hole. Remove that plug, spray it out again. Next, we'll go ahead and take our socket, stick it down in there. And then it's easier to come in actually from that right side and come underneath the wires and go ahead and hit it that way. Go ahead and start loosening it. back one, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this to go ahead and stick it in there and get it just right. Go ahead and thread that one in.
All right, go ahead and stick your boot back on. All right, and hopefully that one, it was a little bit worse than the other two, and then hopefully that one prepared you for the front right one, because that one's gonna be the worst. Let's go ahead and move to it. All right, like I said, I did save the best for last. This is the one that warrior owners hate, this front right hand cylinder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get as many of these lines kind of just tucked out of the way as possible to give us a little bit more access. So let's go ahead and kind of move some of these around and kind of just see how much room we can create here. And you can kind of see there's that plug down there poking out. So we'll go ahead and take that boot off. Actually, sorry, first thing, go ahead and make sure you spray that out there. Go ahead and remove that boot. Spray it in there one more time. And then if you've got, if you're lucky enough to have that tool, man, it's gonna make this job a lot easier. And honestly, you'd probably be better off going and finding the tool somewhere to get the job done than you would trying to just use regular tools. Once you've got that sieved on there, go ahead and come in from that side again, like I said on the other one, and go ahead and start extracting it. All right, pull that plug. I'm actually gonna do this one just like I did that right rear cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and use the actual tool kit socket to go ahead and stick that back in. Main thing is just to make sure you don't cross thread these guys. Just get in there and take your time. You know, if it feels like it's not going in right, back it out and stick it back in. Another big tip, make sure that you always pull those tips off before you install it. You don't want to get these down in there, try and put that boot on and realize it's not sliding on. So you want to make sure you get those tips off, that way you don't have to pull them back out and put them back in. All right. Go ahead, once you got that tightened down, go ahead and pull that out. Get your boot reinstalled. And from there, we're ready to start putting everything back together. Now there's actually a lot that you can tell by looking at a plug when you extract it. You can look at it and see the color and it'll actually tell you whether it's running rich or lean and kind of how you need to adjust your fuel mixture. So you might want to go ahead and look up charts on that and kind of check into that as well. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in and watching this video. I hope it was able to help you get your plugs changed out and save you some money and keep any unnecessary damage from occurring at the same time. Now, if this is your first time here, do me a favor and scroll down and hit the subscribe button. If you hit the bell, you'll also be notified to new videos when they come out. Be sure to like this one and share it as well. And I'm also going to be starting a vlog in the next few weeks, and I'm actually going to get a little bit more into the life of Brian. So be sure to watch for that and check it out. Next week, I'm wanting to revisit those tank stripes and show you a way to get them on. It's going to be a way that I think anyone with a little time and patience will be able to do. So make sure to watch for that as well. Other than that, guys, 
We'll see you next time.